how to make real estate money off Google and Shopify. How do we take Google and Shopify employees and make them pay us money, real estate money. Hello everyone, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor and Mortgage Broker. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to find the Google and Shopify employees, the software engineers to make crazy amounts of money in comparison to you, to me, to everyone else. And we're gonna buy some units and rent it to them, okay? So here's the review, let's go. So this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate agent, mortgage broker. This is my uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Uh, last night I posted uh, $17.2 million uh, development, 12.3 million nice home, no boo assignments. Uh, there's recent videos, how to buy real estate with a partner, on and on and on. Today I wanna focus with you on something very critical, which is how to take the highest paid employees and find units that they wanna buy or rent and then flip it to them or rent it to them. I'm gonna focus on the renting to them, but the same applies for flipping to them, selling to them, okay? So here we are. Uh, fashionhousecondostrono.com, working on this website, going very well. If you need information about Fashion House, it's here. If you need information about Toronto condo assignments, listings, more videos and in-depth articles, go to urbanrealtytoronto.com, which is my main website. For example, this one I posted, eight secrets of selling your Toronto condo assignments. You can sell them to Google and Shopify employees too. Tells you exactly how to do it. It's a long article. And here, something that caught my um, my attention. Can any real estate price look uh, growth looks absurd when compared to US bubbly uh, bubbly US cities? Or really, we're still cheaper than them. So it's it's a bit misleading. We're growing quicker because we're cheaper. Think about it. We're growing quicker because we're cheaper. The Canadian dollar is very very cheap. It's literally inexpensive compared to everybody else. That's why we have more growth because there's people here making a lot of money and they're buying these properties, uh, whether they work here, they come to work here, or they don't even live here and they just buy properties. Okay, and the rest of us us locals. But today our focus is how to make real estate money on Shopify and Google employees. I'll show you right now. So um, this is an article I saw the record.com, believe it's like a Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, uh, Kitchen, Google Kitchener. Community Tech Tech Center. Okay, cool. So here they show you that Google will more than double the size of its Canadian engineering headquarters in Bright Hopped Street after signing a lease to take all of the space, all of the space, in the 11-story office building that will be built across the street. So this building is not even built, and Google already said, give me the whole building. Okay, so they're putting, uh, right now they have 185,000 uh, square feet, and they're going to expand uh, at 300,000 square feet. So, so expanding to the new building so they're adding 300,000 square feet that's huge that's about the size of an entire condo building uh average one you know so you look in here um increase for and hold it up right here. okay so google is growing by leaps and bounds facebook is growing by leaps and bounds they're all hiring and the two main hubs that you want to look at is uh, guelph kitchen of waterloo and of course toronto so this is article is uh here um here, what I did is I looked at how much uh, people are, are getting paid. So, what's the average salary in Toronto, Ontario, Canada? It's 59000 according to this website called payscale.com. $59,000, okay? So, and you can see your software developer making sixty-seven, project manager, 74, executive assistant, 55. That's a lot, I think. Uh, administrative assistant, 40. Yeah, operations manager, 69. Software engineer, the highest one, 74. Legal assistant, 49, okay? So, if we look at, uh, there's only like two over 70 here, which is the software engineer and the manager and the software developer. I guess that's a level below, pretty close, 67. But look at the pay scale, starts about 49 or 50, goes to 90. This guy, sorry, 50 go to over 100. Uh, 44 to over 100, 52 to over 100. So there is some good movement here. And I want to focus on the people that make the most amount of money because they can rent or buy from me the best, most expensive condos. Okay, and when I'm an investor and I want to invest in, in a good quality condo, it costs more. Okay, the location costs more, the condo costs more, the view costs more, facing south or west costs more versus north or east, on and on and on. I want, as an investor, I want to grab the best, the highest, the best and highest value of an investment I can make, and then I want to make sure their service means someone is paying the mortgage on it the taxes and the condo fees. Instead of me, let it be a renter, and my renter, I want it to be the best possible renter possible, but what's better than a software engineer, okay? They, you know, great tenants, just do this all day, kind of like me, they make tons of money, and they're very busy, and a perfect tenant to have. 
So I went ahead and I researched uh, glassdoor.ca. That's a site that shows you salaries, and I think people can tell you how they like the employees or don't like. Uh, there's 11,000 reviews for Google here. 4,500 jobs. This is for Google. 21,000 salaries, 10,000 interviews. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So you know, there's, there's a large sample sale. So software engineering at Google Canada is averaging $109,000. They start at 72 and they end up at about $200,000 Canadian a year. Uh, a senior software engineer is 141. Um, and the range here was a little lower, but you know, it's like 141, so it's more. And if you're just starting out, you're making 38, say 40 bucks an hour. 40 bucks an hour just to start, okay? That's really good. Uh, now, I haven't signed in, but I can't exactly if these are sales jobs, you know, software engineer, that depends on the level. But obviously, this is enough to tell you here. The average salary in Canada is 59000 And, you know, if you are a programmer, um, you double that just to start. That means that uh, a 25-year-old kid that finished uh, computer science school at Waterloo is starting at $100,000. Maybe they start at 72 or 96, but they average, they average 100,000. So, you know, two, three years in, they're already making $100,000. How much you really need to live in Kitchener Waterloo? Not much. How much you live, they need to live in Toronto? A little bit more, just the difference in the rent. You know, the food cost is the same. Um, so, there's a lot of money left over, and that money, if you're smart, and software engineers are smart, they're going to invest it, okay? Like, these kids know what, what's up, so they're going to invest it. So. There's two ways to do it. Uh, one is first to invest in yourself and you rent a place. So rent it from us, rent it from the investors. We buy in these units, we buy in these investment units because there's no rental properties in Toronto, okay? There's almost no purpose-built rental means rental buildings, very, very few. There's a few completed uh, throughout the last few years, but really since the 70s or 80s, none have been built. So there's shortage of thousands and thousands and thousands of rental units. That's why the rental prices are so out of whack. Okay, so everyone's coming to Toronto, making good money. Um, I'm not gonna buy it because I'm in my 20s or my 30s, so I'm gonna rent. You know, go to Yossi, go to Yossi's client. Hey, you guys buy really nice condos. You guys focus on quality. You guys focus on long term. This is a really nice condo. You pick the ni nicest one bedroom in the building. You pick the nicest one plus bedroom in the building. I'd like to rent it from you. Okay, no problem. Well, you know, I got this one bedroom, King West. I'm gonna charge you 2,400 for it. But it's okay because I'm making 100000 or 200000 a year. I'd like to live in King West. I'd like to live in one of the shiny buildings like Fashion House or Thompson. I'd like the rooftop pool. I'd like the action around, you know, on and on and on. Um, here's Shopify. So Shopify, do you know, it's a Canadian company. They're out of uh, Ottawa and they have brilliant success and, and very, very happy. There's a Canadian company, you know, from Ottawa doing so well. Um, and they recently opened an office just behind me here at 620 King and it's a giant office they share the office with Indigo I think that each of about five floors and Shopify also is, uh, pays really well um, custom success guru I guess that's kind of a desk a help desk 41,000 so if that's a roommate situation but a software developer at 100,000 I don't know what software developer makes 35 but uh, but 153 so you know 100,000 average uh, it's good uh, success Guru Remote, also 40, Software Engineering 95, goes to 136. So the software engineers here are also making this 42 reported here, 16 reported here. Um, hourly Intern, if you're a student, 34, Google is 38, but you know, it, it's a range. Okay, so that's really good. Hourly Intern, you're just a student, you're making 30 bucks an hour in Shopify, you know, and, and 38 or so at Google. So, but, you know, it, it's a big competition. The best, the brightest, the smartest. Go to these companies and I'll pop in, I'll show you some pictures of what their offices look like. These guys, these kids, <laughs> these guys, girls, doesn't matter, uh, enjoy a very good quality of living. They work hard, they study hard, but they get paid really well and they get paid not only in money but also in lifestyle, in benefits, okay? So check it out. A front end developer, 88,000, that's a UX person. You can go uh, right here to the Computer Academy, do like an intensive uh, 10 or 12 week course in learn the basics of US start at thirty or forty dollars an hour and before you know it you're making eighty eight thousand dollars a year. Product design ninety two, senior software engineer one twenty five, Shopify Guru forty one, so that's more of a help desk. Uh, hourly intern, so you just started thirty bucks, product manager ninety two, thirty four, ninety three for data engineer, software developer, 
monthly interim fifty five four one three five thousand four hundred thirteen dollars a month. That's most that uh, more than most Canadians make, my friend. And these are young people, uh, senior front end developer one hundred five. So, you know, if, if you're a developer, you're looking at a hundred thousand or more. Uh, if you're starting out right after school or in between, you're making thirty or forty bucks an hour. And if you're doing support and you have no computer knowledge, I mean, you have basic, obviously, you make it in the 40s. So that's, you can see that. Uh, here's a video I found, it, although it's from 2012, um, you know, and, and I've been to these offices. Here's a video. She's, ha it's really cool. It's kind of funky. They got everything. Every room has a name so you can book the room, have your little meeting there, talk to your friends. This is the Stomping Tom Connors room. So they obviously spend a lot, the desk come up and down. It's fancy stuff, my friends. It's not like, the, I just say the coffee shops. But these guys, they have fancy stuff. They make so much money. You know, Google has so much money. It hires the best people they can find, and it pays them really well, and those are our customers. <coughs> so it's very important to understand what our customers are used to. They're used to very nice work environments. They're unique. They're fun. They're interesting. Okay? So that's where you go. Google is a remarkable company in, in many ways. Uh, this is... Another article I pulled here, and this is the old office for Shopify, but you know, they got the ping pong table and the foosball tables, and they got a coffee shop in inside. Like, you know, Shopify up here, apparently they have their own kitchen and own coffee shop and everything. So just come here, work as much as you can. You don't even have to leave. Uh, but apparently the Indigo in the same building, they have uh, less of a kitchen, so we see more of Indigo people coming down. But really, like the King West really got a big boost the moment the 620 King West opened, it's a huge boost. There's probably about 5,000 people walking into that door every day. You know, it's a, it's a large uh, commercial office and, and it's all computer stuff. It's just people sitting on computers. If you're on, on King West, one of the high floors, you can look right in, especially at night, you can see all the screens. You know, if you're working on a computer, you're making money. And if you're making money, you can afford a nice condo and that's where we come in because we have a place for you. So most people that start, you know, start out, they're gonna rent. That's our market for tenants as investors. And then when they continue and they they work for a few years, you know, they let's say they work for five years, and they at the 150 range, they grossed 750 thousand dollars. Okay, uh, in seven years, they probably grossed close to a million dollars. That's someone who's 30 years old. They they might have grossed a million dollars by the time they're 30, and that's not uncommon. And that's in Canadian dollars. In the States, it's way more. In the States, you work in San Francisco, you're making like 180 US. So out of 30, 60, let's say 240, 250 Canadian. So that's quarter billion Canadian one year. Okay, that's the brain drain and all of that. Of course, you such crazy money, you're going to go where it is. And then the other way, there's people coming from other countries here to work. Because, you know, if, if you're a software engineer in India, which sends a lot of engineers, software engineers to Canada and, and the US, um, then you get a huge upgrade in your salary, huge upgrade in, in, uh, in uh, your living conditions, and you spend some money here. You know, you probably, if, if you come in temporarily to work two or five years, then you rent. Uh, but if you come and stay in Canada, you probably want to look to buy because, you know, everyone knows what happens to real estate. Okay, so some looks here into the office. And the other thing about Shopify is they just did a deal at the well. And they're going to have some like, this is the Fortress of Solitude room right there. Don't get out of there until you've done your work. Okay, but that, that's how it is. You can play guitar. That's, that's how the tech world looks like. There's dogs. Hopefully you're not allergic. Okay, so that's what it looks like. What else I got here? So this is an article about Shopify. This is very important. They're, they're spending $500 million to expand their presence in Toronto. Okay, so... When I'm saying how to rent to Shopify, I'm serious about that, my friend. Shopify is giant, and it's keeping a lot of investments in Kitchener, uh, Kitchener Waterloo and Toronto. That's where we are. So in 20, uh, this is going into the well, which is uh, down here front. And the sales have started. If you like to look at the well, I'll make some more information available at the well. I think it's a phenomenal project. It's a very serious investment consideration for everyone uh, because it's such a smart way to do it because they, com they, they connect the office, commercial, retail, and residential living all together. So essentially, you can be working in the quarter million square feet uh, office at the well and live right there, okay? Last year, Shopify committed to expand 620 King Street West, which is just moving into now, and it's 178,000 square feet of space. 
So that's thousands of employees, you know. So these guys have well over 400,000 square feet of space. That's a lot of space, my friend. That's like two giant buildings. And that's exactly what it is. So they're doing really well. Okay, so what I want you to do, and that's, uh, I just put on Google here, Shopify Toronto Office, just to look, it's more or less the same. You can do Google Sh Toronto Office, close that. So look at this here. So I keep going through this historic statistic. This is from Treb. You go to the Toronto Real Estate Board and then click on the market watch you get here. And then at the bottom, there's two links. That's the first one, historic report. So you click here, you get here. And what you can see is overall, except for these two hiccups that we had, one in the late 80s, which we didn't manage inflation properly, and then uh, one, two years ago, which let price run out too much. And in my opinion, it's probably a lot of foreign money cost to that too, a lot of cash money. Uh, and now we, we seem to be more stabilized. The prices are going up back again, you know, last May, this June, May was crazy. Uh, so what you're looking at, the average Toronto MLS sale price is going up. Obviously, it's going up faster downtown. Uh, because it's more sought after and look at you know we're adding let's say we're adding 5,000 people to, to, to the core making at least hundred thousand dollars a year okay so first of all 5,000 times a hundred thousand five is uh, half a million and then I got three more zeros so five million fifty million five hundred million dollars in salaries every year uh, more or less going half a billion in salaries that's a lot of spending money now most of that money is completely spent 500 million completely spent, okay, a third to maybe 30%, 40%, 50%, depending how much they make, goes on rent. So that is what we are looking at. So we are looking at probably they're spending two to $300 million on rent alone every year. All you need is 2,000 a month, 2,500 a month, 3,000 a month, and there's still a lot of room for everyone. Coffee is phenomenal. So this is, my, this is my idea. How do we make money off Google and Shopify and all the tech sector is we get nice quality condos that they like because you saw the offices they looked in at. You know, they, there's a lot of them. They're making crazy money and they have nice offices. So they're used to this lofty style. You know, it became really popular again about, say, 20 years ago and really like peaking maybe five to ten years ago. And now it's a common thing. First, it was like loft. You live in a loft. It's an old building that you have the noise. But then developers started building new lofts, what we call soft lofts. So there was a hard loft, which is the conversion, and a soft loft, which is basically a lot of the condos, you know, with the exposed ceiling, concrete ceiling, and kind of elements of lofts, you know, the, 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 the ducts are running through and all that stuff. And that's exactly what you see here. So maybe if you're old school, you go, oh, that's not nice. I want my ceiling smooth. You can find one of those, but the employees themselves are used to this kind of environment. So, you know, if I can find like a nice loft, I showed you uh, 608 Richmond a couple of videos ago. Um, there is an article on yosikaplan.com that I can show you what I mean. And you can see how similar they look. To me, that's a prime example um, of, of what you can do here. Let me see if I can uh, quickly locate this article here. So this unit... Uh, was up for sale for about half a million, give or take, and it did really, really well. I made a video about it, it's uh, number 138, and it's just gorgeous, okay? So here's some pictures, and you can see how similar this style is to the actual office. Here it is. Oh, I lost the thing. Okay, there you go, so that's, and that. So if I'm making hundred thousand dollars and I'm paying uh, 23 or 24, 25 on the rent, not a big deal. Okay, I can do this. Uh, if I'm making, say, just to round up, I make 120. It's my third year as a software engineer. I'm making 120. There's a thousand, two thousand, three thousand software engineers making 120,000 right now, sitting in the office right now around me. Okay, so you just need one tenant, and there's not enough units, and there's very few units which look really, really good. So I always say pick the quality units because I, I'm a long-term investor. I'm not a flipper. Yes, I flipped. I bought a house, fixed it with my own hands. Didn't know what I was doing, but it took me six months, but I did it and flipped it. Um, we've done a lot of flips and assignments, but really, real estate is about long-term. Just very, very steady. Buy the best you can. Then don't worry about it. Put a great tenant in and let it run its course, okay? That's, that's the safest, easiest way to do it. 
Um, if you got the guts and the balls, sure, go and the, the, what, it, what it takes, not physically speaking. Um, then you can flip and do more daring moves. But if you want the easy move, just buy a good property and sit on it. Rent it out and sit on it. And you can find a lot of good properties in King West. Uh, I, can, I can get you a new condo at the well. I can get you uh, an assignment 620 King. I can get you a place at Dr. Thompson, the first or the second one. I can get you a nice place at Fashion House. These are like the staple places, but there are many, many more uh, condos. You know, the Entertainment District has a lot of great buildings coming out. and still some good assignments. You can still find stuff in the around 1,000 bucks a foot at Minto King West. I see stuff at 1,000 bucks a foot at uh, um, Art Condo, Young and Eglinton. I, I still see 1,000 bucks a foot, but that's kind of like withering away, and we're going to start seeing uh, 11, 12, 30 for resale. And the new sale is coming out very high now. The new sale is coming out at, I don't even know if you can find anything at 13 in this area, 15 and up. Okay, but if I can find a sign in a thousand and the next door said for 15, I think I'm doing okay because that means that there's anticipation of the developers anticipating the price to be a 15 by the time they complete. Also, developer probably paying such crazy amounts, you know, that they have to do it. You know, across the street here, the Thompson um, used to be an old motoring, the last one left in, in Toronto. And then he was uh, sold, I think it was like 20 million. People go, oh my God, 20 million. But then it became the Thompson. <laughs> Good investment? Absolutely. So, you know, don't let the numbers confuse you. Think of how these things are moving. And always remember that we are in, uh, stuck in this reality, which the economy is inflationary. So all these people, they yell, oh, my God, it's going to break. It's not going to break because if it's going to break, everyone's going to be on the streets, okay? There's going to be a global catastrophe. We, Maybe that's the plan, but as long as that's not the plan, you know, it's it's just gonna keep creeping up uh, a little faster, a little slower. If it's too fast, there'll be an adjustment. If it's too slow, it'll come up more. But overall, real estate keeps creeping up because it has to protect the inflation. Okay, it's inflationary measure. Um, the more money we print and the more we devalue the value of what we have, we need more of this. You know. Uh, <laughs> Simple example, you want like a, a crappy little condo, it's cheap, but you want something better, it's more expensive. You start going to pay for it. But if I spend more money on it, then I can get more for it and I start to inflate the numbers. In this case, you know, uh, I print more money, so I bring more money into the money system, in, into the repository. So first I had 100 coins and I can buy whatever I want, but now I have 200 coins. Each coin is worth half. Kind of that's how it works, okay? So that's what I want you to look at. This is, of course, if you want to drill into the market watch. And you can see there was a bit of scare, you know, with the um, uh, 16 measures, which happened about a couple of years ago, and trying to clean up all the dirty money, you know, that's coming to Canada and bags of cash buying houses. I don't like that. I think that that's a problem because for me, locals, and for you, all us locals, it's just making it too expensive. It's okay for the real estate to keep and just beat inflation a little bit. That's, that's really what we want, okay? Um, you know, the stress test for mortgage, I think it's good to make sure that everyone can afford a mortgage. Now, how many percentage of points and how would it work? I don't know, but I think this, it just should be logical that if anything happens, you got sick, you know, you lost your job, everything became more expensive, you have enough margin there that you can keep paying for your house and not have to sell it. Because if you sold it, probably your neighbors at the same time, and then we have a tumble down. So, to me, I like to be conservative, I like to be safe, and I'd rather to make small, incremental, consistent gains throughout a very long time. Of course, sometimes you hit the goal pot, but you, generally speaking, you know, I'm going after this. That guy is going to be there for, you know, three years, be my tenant, five years, be my tenant, and then these tenants become uh, investors. So I have a lot of tenants, you know, they, they, they're... Um, work at the university, they work at the bank, they work at the government, whatever it is, it's safe, stable jobs. Those are the tenants I look for. And they're going to rent for two, three, four, five years, and then they buy something. Either they get married or had kids or didn't, it doesn't matter, but they're going to buy. Okay, so that's that's the process. That's the life cycle um, of this process. So if, you are, if you're aware of this, you know, you can do well. So now I'm going to show you a couple of things, okay? 
So I showed you this, I showed you this. Uh, this is just for fun, 59 million at Lakeshore, Oakville, very nice. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Um, okay, so you go to yossi.searchrealty.co and you can put, now this will give you um, resale and some of the assignment. If you want more assignments, you gotta go to um, either of my sites. They're just manually, po literally manually posted. There's this one, there's uh, Urban Realty, there's Assign Condo. We've been posting here. And this will give you some, and also if you wanna sell your assignment or sell your condo, come to me, we'll help you. But we've been posting assignments here, okay? To make it a repository because you cannot put the assignment on the MLS okay so when we go here what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for Toronto and then it's gonna come with all these areas C1 is in downtown west so if I focus on downtown west which is from uh, Young Street to Dufferin and from the water to uh, Bloor south, uh, south side of Bloor north side of Bloor is already a different area and then the map will open and it opens it shows me all the prices now I want to filter Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure it's got a bathroom. It doesn't have to have a bedroom. Maybe it's a studio. I put a minimum price of 300 And the reason I'm doing that because I want to filter um, anything that came into the system is not really a residential place, okay? Uh, could be a business for sale that was marketed as residential. Could be a rental, whatever. Now, with a max price, I'll try 600 Why? Because that's kind of my... Obviously, there's nothing in three, but I still get 154 uh, listings. View that. And here I go, and basically this is the repository of investment units that I'm looking at, okay? Now, I start to look at the, what is the best investment unit I can find. These are resale and assignment combined. I'll also show you how to find assignment, and I sort them. So first of all, you can sort by latest listings. What came, what just came on the market. So you got a room at King West, uh, 90 Queen, uh, Queens Wharf, that's by the water. That's kind of nice, actually. Uh, 4K Spadina, that city place, that's a B location in my opinion. I look for like the fancy stuff because it doesn't really cost a lot more, but I think overall I get a lot more. So 111 Bathurst, this is right above me, that's a really nice unit here. That's uh, 51 East Liberty, but just as you walk into Liberty Village, Liberty Village I'd like to see a bit of a discount if I were to invest there over King West. Okay, 700 King, just at the corner here, that's the old uh, office building that's been renovated. So 500, I don't know, maybe they're looking at offers, but that's, that's an attractive price. So you know, I can mark that too if I like. And here we go, okay, Joe Schuster, Abel, and so on. I can also look at what's the most, uh, for, uh, let me see what's the most expensive, just for fun. Okay, so I, because I hit that 600, you know, that's all I get. Uh, this is a studio condos, Richmond, that'll be a really nice building. Just doing the assignments now, there's lots of units there, and that to me is a prime, prime idea for uh, uh, for buying. Yeah. Uh, 955 Bay, that's the Brit, I believe, that's also really nice, uh, closer to U of T, okay. Uh, and, and just running... Uh, fashion house, fashion house doing great in prices. This is asking 600,000 for six floor unit, uh, and this unit is facing the courtyard. I've just looked at it, so I'll show you. So, a nice unit, it does face the courtyard, but it's a cool kind of wraparound unit. Okay, so that's there you go, that's a lofty style you're looking for to match. What your employees are used to, your employees, your renters are employed as software engineers, and that's where they want to live. Okay, that's what they want. That's what you want to offer them. So <clears throat> now obviously if if you go and, and want to buy something cheaper, in Toronto it's kinda of hard to find anything under half a million now and forever. Um, but you can buy in other areas, you can try for studios. If you want to find something cheaper, I've seen units below five hundred in the Minto King West. Those will come as assignments only right now because it's still far from closing. So, but if you want a good deal in a thousand bucks a foot, they do exist. Just a few left, and that's it. Uh, West condos that I've been mentioning quite a few times, and it's it's uh, featured on yossikaplan.com, is a beautiful place to invest. Uh, I've done a bunch of deals there, and if you like, uh, give me a shout, and I'll show you. Um, West, West, West. Let's see if the search works. 
There you go. Okay, so uh, this building here, this is Altea. Um, the two main buildings are mostly sold, but the warehouse, the bottom here, that has not been on the market yet. So they will come and they'll be like nice loft. So you can still find nice units here. Uh, we did a deal at one of the penthouses here. They're quite affordable, actually. Um, we're looking at 1200 a foot for a penthouse, which to me is a phenomenal deal. Uh, I don't know what the price is now. And you got all the floor plans here. Now, if you can afford a two-bedroom, two-bathroom in Toronto, I would consider it. If you can afford a penthouse in Toronto, I would consider it. Why? Because there's just not enough of them. So, you know, if you can find a large quality unit, whatever it is, you should consider it because there's just not... So, uh, I said at Altura, I correct Aspen Ridge. Um, more coffee. Okay, but this is what we're looking for. We're looking at nice stuff, quality stuff, uh, Yorkville, good locations for ADH University. We have... Uh, this one unit featured here, but we have more. That's a phenomenal building. And if you go in 48 University, you're going to be ended up renting to doctors, surgeons, visiting doctors uh, that are um, that are on university, maybe government executives, on and on and on. Uh, this unit is prime, in my opinion, to furnish it and then rent it furnished six months at a time. Okay? And the reason I say six months is because most condo docs, you have a minimum of six months unless you allow short term, but I do not advocate to do short term if it's not allowed, okay? Like everything that we do is absolutely legal and perfect and we do not break the rules. We don't. We can go to the management and say, hey, we'd like to work on the process to do shorter term um, or if you want to buy in a building with Airbnb, I know I have a list of all the allowed Airbnb buildings in town. I can tell you which one those are and then we can focus on those to buy there if that's what you want to do. But if the, uh, if the condo docks, okay, if they, if they say six months, we just do, okay, six months minimum or 12 months minimum. Uh, so this at uh, Fort Edith University, in my opinion, will be a major uh, opportunity. Okay, this one here. <clears throat> okay, I want to show you a few more things. So let's say that you are on a budget and you, you want to find some reduced. So that's a little bonus here. So you go to yossi.searchrealty.co. At the bottom here, I'm going to add it to Urban Realty Toronto. There's, a, I think, a link called price reduction. I hope you can see this, price reduction. I'm going to click on it. And what the system does, it basically searches where everything's got in the system. And right now, what it's pulling, it's pulling everything from the system. It's got about 2,000 listings of price reduction. Uh, OnePlus, over, over 100, and has reduced price. Now, do you understand? Reduced price, it doesn't necessarily mean it's cheap. It means it was reduced. And what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean by that. 97 or 98 percent of all listings they sell for the asking price or close to it by one or two percent. But if they haven't sold, what's going to happen is me as a listing agent, I'm just going to take it off the MLS and repost it at a lower price. And then if it's sold, it shows that it's sold for asking or more or less in a, on the sale price. Okay. So it doesn't mean that the price reduction still gets you to the market value, but it does show you that uh, the seller and their agent uh, potentially are understanding that that is not the right price for this uh, property. Okay, so that's good. Now, if you hit the map here, it'll show you where they are, so you can start searching. Geographically, this is 288 Zoo Park Road. <laughs> so, you know, like we're covering a huge area here of Ontario, and if you want to search just for, just for kicks, uh, see what's the cheapest one I got on this search. It's 103000 and it's in Renfrew. Okay, for $103,000, you can get this home. It's pretty cool. I don't know what these places are, but, you know, they look all right to me. There's some water stuff here. Okay, but now what I want to do is I want to start filtering out. So, for example, I want to say, just show me the city of Toronto. So I'm going to choose Toronto, Ontario to include all the sub-areas of Toronto and the system will come and see what it's got for me. Okay, so now I got 723 or more homes that have been reduced. Okay, so some of these are old, some of these are new. It's really a mixed bag of everything. But you basically start here and you start going through this listing and see who reduced and you try to figure out why they reduced. Some of these listings will actually tell you the reduced price. Um, not all of them, but I'll show you where to find it. The idea here is that I share as much information as I can with you so you can do the homework and then come to me and see you're ready to do the deal. So these guys were at 414901. 
and they reduce by 10,000 to 404,901. So it's not a lot, it's just 2.5%, but maybe that's what it needs to bring them to bring them the buyer. Now, if it's not, they are going to have to reduce again, keep it on the market, or relist it at a lower price. Okay, so let's look at a couple more options here. So let's look if I can find anything uh, downtown. So downtown west, it's called Toronto C1. That's the MLS uh, region. And there it is. And the map is filled with these properties. And they're basically going through. So all these, these are reduced listings. Now some of these are homes. Some of these are condos. Okay. Condo. Condo. I look here on the left. Four ninety nine. dollars Oh. 499 Liberty Village. That's kind of cool. Let me look at this. So 499, 65, 75, 85 East Liberty. It's a good building. And here's the unit. Okay, decent. So decent living for someone. The cost is half a million. Uh, we recently sold uh, DNA3 for half a million. So I'd rather be right on King Street with a King Street as for half a million. Or maybe this unit is a bit larger, maybe it's designed better. The building is definitely very good. Uh, this is one of the best buildings in Liberty Village. And it's a large unit, four, 576 square feet. The one I sold was smaller, so that means that the price per foot was higher. So I'll give you an example. Um, I'll bring up the calculator. I probably can't see this, but it's here. Uh, so let's say they actually got half a million, so I'll do 500. 1, 2, 3, 500, 0, 0, 0, divide by... 576 and I get $868 a foot. $868 a foot. That's a good price. Now, how much did I get at DNA3? I got 500000 and I had 490 square feet. I forget exactly how many. 1020 a foot. Okay, so there is a $140 a foot difference between these two. That means that if I were paying $1,020 a foot on the 576, so I should have the 1020 times 576. This unit would have been 587,755. So that means that this unit represents, uh, if I look at one bedroom versus one bedroom, ignore the size, represents a discount of $87,000 over King Street. Okay? So that discount comes in larger space or lower uh, price, it doesn't matter, but it represents a discount. So Liberty Village will be slightly discounted than King West. That's how I find out. And as I keep playing this game and doing, running the numbers, I start to understand where the value is. Now the question is, where would the Shopify and Google employees want to live? Uh, so if they're the, making the 40 and the 50 and the 60, they're going to live in Liberty Village. But hey, Liberty Village is really cool. It's young. It's sexy. Lots of dogs, young people. So maybe they want to live here. But if not, I can take them to uh, another place. I can take them to 608 Richmond. Okay. Or I can take them uh, uh, west as a pre-construction, and on and on and on. Okay, let's look at a couple other options, and I'm done for today. Uh, you can go on Bay Street. So Bay Street now, now, Bay Street is not so close. I would maybe look at the well if I want to do pre-construction and rent it to Shopify. Uh, but Bay Street is very attractive to uh, government employees, hospital employees, U of T students, foreign students, and executives that want to be close to uh, Yorkville. Okay, so that building is always at a premium. Uh, 38 Grenville, that's, uh, that's the first like modern building on Bay. Those we're selling these are 400 bucks a foot. Okay, and look at them now. But still reasonable, okay? So you got a lot of, this is uh, Liberty Village. So you got a lot of choices here you can look at. And remember, these are the reduced. Uh, that's a really nice building, 18 Beverly. That's Queen, that's like right smack downtown. Uh, now you can see slightly older you may want to renovate this nonetheless uh, when the units are older usually they're more spacious they're larger every year they get smaller and smaller and smaller you know the first one bedroom that i bought was 700 square feet and people laughed at me because how can you do at least in a thousand square feet in one bedroom but now they're 400 square feet so that's that's the trade-off now this thing was at 789.9 it's 749.9 so that's a forty thousand dollar discount they or I should say more accurately, that's a $40,000 reduction in the asking price. And nobody knows what it's going to sell for, but you can see, um, let me see if I can see the exact size here. It 
doesn't say. Sometimes it reports, sometimes not. And the condo fees are high. The 787, that's another problem here. <coughs> okay. So would this be uh, a typical unit for me to buy as investment? Probably not because the condo fees are high. But I'm going to walk in there, check it out. The location is phenomenal. And maybe the unit itself is so good, maybe it's worth it. Okay. So that's how I search for investment units. I may look at the price reduction like I showed you before. You go to the bottom. You're going to go to the home. You'll see that search realty.co. And then you're going to go to the price reduction here and hit that. Or if you want, you can hit the swimming pool tab. There's a swimming pool link. It basically gives you, has pool. And I'm going to do the same exercise. I'm going to put Toronto C1 to see the downtown and see what is marked in the C1 area. Okay. Now, I should potentially see listings here that come from Fashion House that has a pool, Thompson has a pool, but maybe it wasn't marked, or the system doesn't understand, but this house has a pool, so it came up with that. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you today. When you are buying an investment, think about who's going to be your end renters. Um, that's going to be, and if I want to rent to a Shopify person, a Google person, you know, Nobu, it's very fancy. Um, so I want to buy a really nice property in Toronto that will make me really good money. I showed you how to get a price reduction. Um, and I showed you the buildings that we like because these buildings uh, are the ones that they're probably going to go for. I also showed you how to find where these high-tech employees are going to be working like this. So Kitchener, I'm immediately going to look into the Kitchener area and see what areas in Kitchener um, are good. So I look at 51 Bright Hub Street and I'm going to search um, what properties I can buy there which are easy to rent or flip. Usually they're going to be condos, not homes. And I'm going to go from there and then call Yossi and say, Yossi, I saw your video about renting uh, or flipping to Shopify and Google uh, employees to use software engineers as my clients, as my investors, as my tenants. How do I do this? Let's find some stuff. Okay. I showed you how to find the average salary. Go to payscale.com, punch it in. You can see what's going on. I showed you how much the Google people make. They're starting at $110,000 or $38 an hour. Uh, Shopify, just about the same. Okay, these numbers are fluid, and I'm sure that there's engineers going back and forth between these companies. And they're probably, you know, like last for one to three years, and then they, keep, they have to keep bouncing to keep their salaries up. So, you know, they're young people with money, but they want good quality stuff. Uh, they used to, they know, you know, they have really fancy offices. It's really cool. Um, they want to live in an environment, you know, you don't want to work in this fancy building and then go, that's the DJ. Uh, rooftop uh, mini golf, virtual reality, you know, they got all the bells and whistles. They want to have this at home. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, they want to have this at home too. They're used to loft kind of environments, therefore we want to find um, things that match what they used to, like this one, okay? Finally, we can sell and we can find assignments, because assignments, you can still get a discount uh, on assignments. Assignments are, again, some are cheaper than new development. Looks like new developments have become, again, more expensive than assignments for whatever reasons. And how to search the listings, go to the price reduction here, and you can find also, if you want to find assignments, you can go to urbanrealtytoronto.com. I think I had a link open still. Right here. And then you go on the bottom and go to assignments. It's going to open the tab, condo assignments for sale in Toronto. And now it's going to open a search running for assignments. It's not going to be all of them. It's going to be quite a few. Okay, so there you go. You found 57 assignments. But there will be more. Uh, these come and go quickly because sometimes people post them and then you're not allowed and all that stuff. But it gives you an idea of what people ask you for, okay? Here is an assignment at 501 Adelaide, which is the back of the Shopify building. Okay, so I have a few at King Lee, King Lee Condos. Uh, you can see here, what do we got here? We got like a, a one plus den-ish unit facing east. It's literally in the building. They can just like... Go down the elevator, go up the commercial elevator, there you go. And this one is acting 675 for 600 square feet, so just over a thousand foot. Still a pretty good deal. Okay, a pretty good deal here. Um, sh remember, Shopify is growing leaps and bounds. It is from Canada. Most of the developments of, and the engineers of Shopify are in Canada. 
a lot of them are going to go to computer school, math class at Kitchener Waterloo, Guelph, University of Toronto, maybe York, maybe Ryerson, and they, they, they come to the city, they stay in the city, they need a place to live, that's where we come in, okay? So find these nice places, find these deals, um, Shopify, Google, software engineers, make crazy money, and they're waiting for you, they want a place, that's it.